Hyderabad is killing it right now. Back in 2014, when the state of Telangana was formed, Hyderabad was really nowhere when it came to startups, while Bengaluru, India's Silicon Valley, was blowing up. Flipkart raised a billion dollar funding round that year, and the city was home to thousands of startups. And of the startups that raised funds that year in India, 30% of them were based in Bengaluru, while only 4% of them were based in Hyderabad. Now though, things are changing pretty quickly. If we look at Startup Link here, Bengaluru hasn't moved up or down in the global rankings as a startup city in the last year, while Hyderabad has gone up eight rankings in the last year to become the 89th best startup city in the world. And obviously that isn't a great number. Bengaluru is number eight globally, so there is a pretty big gap. But amongst Indian cities, Hyderabad is number five, only behind Bengaluru, New Delhi, Mumbai, and Pune. Now, for me personally, the reason why I've started to notice Hyderabad is the amount of social media buzz that it's been generating the last two, three years. I think people, especially on Twitter, love to compare Bengaluru and Hyderabad. There's a lot of debate online about which city is better if you're planning to start up, if you're an entrepreneur. And a lot of people have actually reached out to me personally, recommending that I visit the city, which I haven't yet, but I've heard very amazing things. And also people have even recommended that we as Backstage with Millionaires relocate our office from Bengaluru to Hyderabad. So this is the debate that we're gonna be having today where we're gonna be figuring out whether in the next decade, Hyderabad has a chance of overtaking Bengaluru as India's number one startup city. So Pankaj, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, I heard a lot of buzz as well and I actually created a short about it and it really blew up. And a lot of people in the comments, especially from people from Hyderabad and nearby areas, they shared the same views that you just shared. But I think we have to take a look at reality on the ground right now. And it's too far-fetched to say, I think that one day Hyderabad can actually take over Bangalore. Because as you said, Telangana was just born in 2014, right? And so this entire startup push from Hyderabad was started after that, around 2015. So it has been less than 10 years. But when you look at Bangalore, it has been the startup or like IT capital of India since 1980s. The entire Indian startup ecosystem was literally born here with startups like Flipkart, as you mentioned earlier. Yeah, that's true. And I think Hyderabad still hasn't really had its Flipkart moment yet. You do have some pretty prominent companies, Darwin Box, Sinoti, these are companies in the SaaS space. They're very important companies. There's also High Radius in the fintech space, but nothing quite as big as what we see in Bengaluru, which is like these giant startups that become nationally recognized and have a pan-India presence. Yeah, and it's not just like few of these startups, if you look at the entire ecosystem, and if you look at the numbers, really, Bangalore right now has a total of 13,000 startups, right? And if you compare that to Hyderabad, it has only around 4,000 startups. And it's not just number of startups, it's like amount of funding these startups are pulling, right? If we take a look at 2022's data, Bengaluru startups raised a total of $11 billion in funding. And Hyderabad startups, on the other hand, raised only $584 million. So when I personally look at that gap, I'm not convinced that even if in next one decade, Hyderabad can come any closer to Bangalore. I mean, I agree that Bengaluru will continue to be a startup hotspot in India and it will continue to grow as well. But I think the city has some pretty major problems some huge issues that Hyderabad and its startup ecosystem actually resolves and has been resolving all the way back since 2015 with the creation of T-Hub, which we'll talk about a little bit later on. And so in my opinion, and I've already mentioned this earlier, but I think that Hyderabad will in the next decade overtake Bengaluru specifically when it comes to the number of startups that are being generated within the city. Now, you mentioned those two numbers there, the amount of funding that's been raised in Bengaluru versus Hyderabad and the amount of startups in these cities. Uh, but I think the gap is actually closing much faster than you might realize. Those numbers, 13,000 startups versus 3,900 startups and $11 billion raised versus $500 million raised, those would need to be overtaken for my thesis to be validated. And so let's take a look and see what kind of progress Hyderabad has made in the last seven or eight years. So in terms of venture capital, Hyderabad would need to 19X the amount of funds that its startups are raising to catch up with Bengaluru. But get this, back in 2015, this is just seven years ago, Hyderabad would have needed to 234 or X, the amount of funds that their startups were raising to catch up with Bengaluru. So there's been a lot of progress in this department. We've seen a gap reduction of more than 12X in the last seven years. And so yes, Bengaluru does have the age advantage here. It is a more mature startup ecosystem, but Hyderabad is trying to catch up. It's sort of like the tortoise and the hare scenario in my mind, at least. I mean, that's a nice analogy, but you yourself said, right, Bangalore is a much more matured ecosystem. And it's because of this age advantage that Bangalore has had, it has grown so far ahead of any other 
cities in India. So the data that I mentioned earlier about how much funding startups in every city is raising. So Bangalore is right there at number one, around $11 billion. And if you like, take a look at number two and three, they're so far behind Bengaluru in that. So Delhi, which is the number two, has raised around $5.2 billion. So that's less than half of what Bangalore has raised. And if you take a look, look at Mumbai, that's like one third, almost one third of what Bangalore has raised. And the speed that you mentioned about Hyderabad, that is growing very fast. I think that's just a low base effect, right? It's like when you grow from one to five, mathematically you have grown like 400%. But when you grow from 91 to 95, you have just grown 4%. So yeah, Hyderabad is really at the bottom right now and whatever progress it's making, mathematically it's looking, it's growing very fast. But once you become bigger, that's growth is eventually gonna slow down. And another thing you mentioned about T-Hub, like it's a great initiative by Telangana government and they've spent a lot of money and energy to sort of uh, talk about and, and promote it on yeah, social media. But you can nowhere compare it to Bangalore's incubation network. So like India currently has around 400 incubation centers and Bangalore alone has a quarter of that, around 112. And if you take a look at Hyderabad's numbers, it's just around 46. So I would say, even after a lot of government support, Hyderabad is way behind where Bangalore is. That's true, uh, but I think Bengaluru's incubation network is a much more disorganized and decentralized network, whereas Telangana's, of course, is a lot of it is sort of government pushed, right? Um, local state government pushed, which I, which I think is actually the fact that they've been able to do that in such a short span of time is extremely impressive. And if we can sort of imagine or project what it might be like in a decade, if they continue on that route, that's where I think uh, the overtaking narrative starts to come into play, right? Where after 10 years, perhaps if the government makes the same amount of effort, which it has been already, um, that's where it could overtake Karnataka. But now let's take a look at the startups that you mentioned earlier. So the number of startups in Hyderabad versus Bengaluru. Back in 2015, Hyderabad had just 1,500 startups, while Bengaluru had ballpark 4,000. No one's quite sure what that number actually was. Some people say 3,000, 5,000, but we can just say roughly 4,000. However, today, according to the government of India's Startup India database, Bengaluru has 21,000 startups, while Hyderabad has 9,000. 300. So basically what that means is that Hyderabad would only need to 2.2x the number of startups in its city to at least reach the level of Bengaluru. But if we look at DPIIT recognized startups, the story changes a little bit. Hyderabad has 3,000 of these recognized startups while Bengaluru has 9,903. So that's a little bit of a bigger difference, a little more than 3x, but I don't think that that's insurmountable, especially if you spread it out over a 10 year time span. I think Hyderabad could definitely accomplish that if the government of Telangana plays its cards right and is actually able to attract startup founders, entrepreneurs to the state to start their companies. I think the bigger challenge is gonna to be to incentivize VCs to set up shop in Hyderabad. VCs are obviously a little bit more difficult to convince and there is already a very robust VC ecosystem in Bengaluru, but I don't think it's impossible, especially given the way that things are moving right now after COVID where raising funds from investors, you don't actually need those investors to be based in your state, right? People who are based in Hyderabad, startup founders could actually technically raise funds from VCs that are based in Bengaluru or Delhi and CR or Mumbai, anywhere in the country or even anywhere in the world because raising funds over a video call or over WhatsApp is becoming more and more common. Like we regularly hear about how Kunal Shah just cut another deal over WhatsApp and he didn't even meet the person in person, right? So these things happen and they're happening more frequently. I also think there's something to be said for homegrown venture capital where firms are actually popping up in Hyderabad because entrepreneurs who have successfully exited their ventures decide that they want to invest back into the local ecosystem. And then I also think the government plays a pretty big role in attracting FDI. This is something that the Telangana government has been pushing a lot, whereas the Karnataka government, typically they just rely on the local ecosystem to organically attract that FDI, which has certainly worked in the past. But if Telangana actually wants to overtake Karnataka as a startup hotspot, as a startup centric state, then I think those kinds of policies and initiatives are definitely going to help in the next 10 years. You're right, like policy does play a big role, but Karnataka has always been the front runner when it comes to making policies for this startup. Did you know that Karnataka was the first
first state in India to make a startup policy for the state back in 2015. Really? Yeah, and even in the most recent government of India state startup ranking, Karnataka was ranked number one. But ultimately, what you are describing here is Hyderabad taking over Bengaluru. And I don't think that will happen just from sentimental standpoint, even if Hyderabad's numbers are better than Bangalore. Yeah, we've actually seen this play out in the past where in 2021, the headlines were saying that NCR had overtaken Bengaluru as the startup capital of India because of the amount of startups that were added to the NCR ecosystem between April of 2019 and December of 2021. But I don't think anyone really seriously ever thought of NCR as the city that had overtaken Bengaluru, despite what the headlines were saying. Part of it was because it's three cities in one, right? Gurugram, Noida, and Delhi. Uh, but at the same time, even if it was a different city, even if it was Mumbai, I think people still think of Bengaluru as a startup capital, irrespective of what the numbers actually say. Exactly. That's precisely what my point is. So even if Delhi can register more startups than Bangalore and for some few years, it can't one day become the Silicon Valley of India, right? It's ingrained in Bangalore's DNA. And there are many cities in India, like Pune, like other smaller cities like Indore, which are trying to attract startups. But even today, when a foreign VC wants to set up shop in India, his first destination is Bangalore. And it's not just my opinion. There's a report here that says Bangalore has become the fifth most preferred city globally for VCs after cities like San Francisco, London, New York, and Boston. And it shows up in the data here that how many deals every city is pulling in. So last year, for example, Bangalore had 652 deals, NCR at 389, Mumbai at 235, and Hyderabad at just 49. Yes, you're, you're right. It, Hyderabad is definitely behind. As of 2023, it is nowhere close to Bengaluru, um, much further behind than NCR, Mumbai. Um, I think it's comparable to where Pune is sitting right now. The two cities are sort of neck and neck. This is why my projection or my thesis is on the next 10 years, because I do think that the secret weapon that Hyderabad has as a city is the support of the local Telangana government. So I want to talk a little bit about how that's actually manifested. What are the different forms that this support is taking? And the first one, the most obvious, the one that everybody's familiar with, of course, is T-Hub, which was set up in 2015. One thing that I really like about this T-Hub thing is actually the T brand. I don't know if too many people focus on this or realize this, but it's very similar to the Apple strategy in terms of their branding. So everything that you buy from, I mean, that's not the case anymore, but it used to be that everything you bought from Apple started with an I, a lowercase I, right? iPod, iPad, iPhone. And the same thing is happening with this T brand where T hub is just the central hub. And then there are a number of different spokes that are coming out of that to create this sort of this wheel shape that I like to imagine with all of these different T brands as spokes of that wheel. So first, just to summarize what T hub is, this is a state of the art innovation center for startups. It's massive. It's this huge business incubator that's impacted over 2000 startups in its lifespan so far and has enabled fundraise worth 1,860 crore rupees till date. Yeah, Bengaluru doesn't have anything quite like that. So the ecosystem here has sort of grown more organically instead of state sponsored, whatever happened in Hyderabad. And one issue I see happening with that is once a government changes, they might not prioritize what the previous government did. And it's because people led this revolution, this ecosystem change in Bangalore. It's because of that it has stayed where it is right now. Yeah, that's a really good point. If a startup ecosystem is relying on a government for support and then suddenly something changes with that government, maybe they de-emphasize the support that they're placing on that startup ecosystem, they reduce funding, whatever happens, the ecosystem could collapse if it's not strong enough to stand on its own two feet. But I think Hyderabad has already gotten to the point now, especially in the last two or three years, where it does actually have its own organic growth and its own culture that's starting to form, right? It's becoming a more mature ecosystem. It's still very nascent, don't get me wrong, but way more mature than it was back in 2015. And I think even if the government suddenly stopped supporting the ecosystem, it would continue to flourish on its own. So now let me talk a little bit about these T brands, these spokes of the T hub wheel. First of all, we have T fund, and this is basically funding early stage startups. We also have T seed, which is focusing on seed stage startups, also college projects and research projects. These are kind of at the ideation stage. They're really early stage bets. 
Um, but of course, if you want to stimulate your ecosystem, you're going to need to pour into those bets, even if most of them aren't going to work out. There's also T bridge, and this is really interesting. I haven't seen this anywhere else in the country, but I'm sure people in the comments will let me know if there's other states that are doing a similar thing, where basically you're bridging the gap between Indian startups and the rest of the world by trying to enable them to succeed on a global level, which I think is really important for India as a whole. And I wish more cities and states did this for their ecosystem because we need to see more in Indian startups going global. This is like the need of the hour, in my opinion. There's also TSIC, the Telangana State Innovation Cell, which is really just promoting and encouraging innovation in the startup ecosystem. And then T Tribe, which is an incubation program specifically geared towards college students. And then the last one, and arguably one of the most important, is T Works. And this is incredible. Let me tell you more about it. So T Works is India's largest prototyping center. And as we all know, India's hardware space is really quite nascent, especially compared to China's, but many Many countries around the world have a much more mature hardware space than India. So this will definitely help to encourage and stimulate that ecosystem. And it was actually set up in 2017. As you can see here, it is massive. It's a huge space. And in my opinion, it's a game changer, not just for Hyderabad and Telangana, but for India as a whole. So in my opinion, these initiatives have really supercharged Hyderabad's startup ecosystem and honestly have been one of the biggest enablers in promoting and encouraging the tech business ecosystem in the Telangana state. Yeah, like I agree, there are some really good initiatives, but is that enough though? Because there's so many elements that make up our ecosystem. So you have things like investors, you have climate, you have talent, and you have people of civil society, and you can't create all of that by just government's push. So even before Hyderabad or Telangana cre was created, Karnataka has long been leading the charts when it comes to startups in India. So the data that I mentioned earlier that in 2022, it was number one in terms of best uh, state for startup and not just Indian ranking, even on global scale, Bengaluru has been the only Indian city which has made multiple times to top 10 list of, you know, most preferred city for startups. And this year, for example, it was ranked number seven. I remember you saying number eight from another report, but the report that I'm showing here, Bangalore was number seven. Yeah. And finally, my point is whether it's the state government or whether it's the central government, they understand the importance of Bangalore. And and they're trying everything in their control to make the city attractive for people, not just outside India, but even people on inside. Nitin Gadkari, for example, recently addressed this traffic problem in Bangalore, and he has announced a satellite town ring road, which is sort of the second ring road in Bangalore. So Bangalore already has an outer ring road, but this second ring road is going to connect all the smaller towns outside Bangalore. So whatever any commercial vehicle which is coming in Bangalore, they just can pass through it. So ultimately what I'm seeing is central or the state government, they're trying to address the issues, whether it's the infra infrastructure issues or it's the traffic issues. And we'll see a lot of development in the next 10 years. I don't know. I mean, Bengaluru can build as many outer ring roads as it wants. Outer ring road, outer, outer ring road, outer, outer, outer. <laughs> you know, it can keep going on and on. But ultimately, I don't think that's going to solve the traffic problems that are happening within the core of the city, which is where most of the startups are based, right? HSR, Kormangala, Indranagar, like these parts of the city are not going to benefit from any number of outer ring roads. And I think Hyderabad is the clear winner when it comes to infrastructure, right? The roads are in better condition. The metro is more connective and useful to citizens than Nama Metro in in Bengaluru, although we are starting to see some development here in the last two, three years with new lines being created. So that's good to see. Um, I think Hyderabad's only real major issue is the weather, right? It's just a lot hotter in Hyderabad than it is in Bengaluru. But I think Bengaluru used to be known as the air conditioned city of India, the garden city of India. That's changing now, though. The city is getting hotter as the lakes get filled in and the trees get cut down and more and more development is happening. So that that gap between the weather benefit of Bengaluru Bengaluru versus Hyderabad is actually getting closed here more and more. And also, Bengaluru has this problem of flooding, which Hyderabad definitely doesn't have that same problem, right? Now, traffic in Hyderabad seems to be getting worse as the years go by and the city gets more and more busy and crowded. And I think Hyderabad has had this unique benefit of being able to look at the mistakes that Bengaluru has made over the years as a growing startup hub that has sort of grown in a haphazard, unplanned way. And Hyderabad has been able to avoid making those same mistakes. Uh, and that's one of the reasons why people are now keen. They're looking at Bengaluru. They're saying this infrastructure is terrible. I need a better alternative that's in South India. It's a startup hub. I don't want to go to NCR where the pollution is crazy. I don't want to go to Mumbai where the hustle culture is insane and rent is through the roof. 
maybe Hyderabad is a good alternative for me as a startup founder. And so, yeah, we're starting to see this shift happening now. But anyways, let's move on to predictions. What do you predict is going to happen in the next 10 years? Yeah, and if you're talking about 10 years down the line, firstly, I want to say I'd really love to see Hyderabad taking over Bangalore because one fundamental issue that I see in India is lack of big cities, right? So if someone is coming out of a smaller town, all options he has is Delhi, Mumbai or Bangalore. So I'd love to see a city that sort of competes neck to neck. Uh, with Bangalore, but the current data that I have, and if I have to make a prediction on that, so in 10 years down the line, I see Bangalore sort of not just becoming the Silicon Valley or the startup capital of India, but entire Southeast Asia and being there right in top three of biggest startup cities right there with San Francisco and London. All right, well, I'm going to make a different bet. I think that uh, people will move to Bengaluru. You're right. It'll become one of these top startup cities, but it's going to become more and more crowded. It's already overflowing. Infrastructure is breaking. Every time they try to fix one thing, 10 more things break. I think within a decade, Bengaluru is going to be a nightmare city to live in, and I don't see anything changing. I mean, we've seen in the last decade, things have gotten worse and worse and worse. There really hasn't been a lot of improvement. In fact, everybody talks about how Bengaluru 20 years back was such a, even you, you were here in Bengaluru. What, like when, when did you first shift to this city 10 years ago 10 years ago how was it back then like really cold and even in summers we didn't need fans but now i need ac what about infrastructure it was very way less crowded yeah exactly it's gonna get worse i think it's gonna get worse and Hyderabad has that unique benefit that they are looking at this, they're looking at themselves as part of their identity, as an alternative and a preferable alternative to Bengaluru. I think that's something that the state government is thinking actively about and people in the city as well are proud about. So there is that pride factor as well. And just this move, this direction of, hey, how can we outcompete Bengaluru and how can we attract people to move here? who are sick and tired of Bengaluru. So I think within a decade, this whole story of Hyderabad versus Bengaluru will play out in such a way. If the state government plays its cards right, this is a huge variable, a huge factor. So if they don't, um, then my prediction may end up not coming true. Um, but if they do play their cards right, then I think within the next decade, Hyderabad will specifically overtake Bengaluru in terms of the number of startups that are being created in the city on an annual basis. So let us know who you think won the debate, Pankaj or myself, and also whether you think Hyderabad has a shot of overtaking Bengaluru in the next 10 years. And also, if you wanna know more about some of the top startups in that city, we actually made a video about the top 10 startups in Hyderabad. You can find that video somewhere on your screen, click the link and check it out because it's a great video. All right, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.